Hi there, my name is Ken Irvin. I'm the Education Coordinator at Guelph Museums. And today I'd like to tell you about the arrival of the railway to Guelph. Now Guelph has many railway stories and I'm gonna cover a few today, but there's lots more to tell. Uh, in the 1850s, Guelph was affectionately called a sleepy hollow by John Smith in his newspaper, The Guelph Advertiser, which was produced right behind us and the, where the Apple Salon is now. That was uh, where his newspaper was published. Uh, John actually became Guelph's first mayor. Uh, he and many other Guelphites wished to change the sleepy Guelph image by bringing the railway to the city and expand our local industry, increase our market area, and change our farming from subsistence agriculture to larger commodity production. With uh, the merchants of Guelph looking for growth and expansion, they took on the challenge of bringing in the railway, the railway from Toronto and making the city an, an economic terminus for the region. The first undertaking to look into this was led by John Galt, the city founder's son, Thomas Galt who helped form the Toronto and Guelph Railway Company. Guelph Town Council voted to purchase 20, 25,000 pounds worth of railway stock to help ensure that the railway's construction and, and Guelph's survival, as it was felt that without the railway, the city wouldn't grow and flourish. In August of 1851, an act was passed to incorporate the Toronto and Guelph Railway Company. Meetings were held in the city with local uh, councils to vote money for the project with a very positive response in favor of the project. Farmers and large landowners strongly supported the project as the railway would drastically reduce the cost of shipping their produce to larger markets. The Guelph ratepayers had to vote to purchase 25,000 pounds of stock in the railway and the vote passed with 112 people for and six against. The railway also looked for private funding to uh, complete the railway's financing. And by April of 1852, over 21,000 pounds of private financing from the Guelph area was subscribed. That's pretty impressive. We're now right in by the, our Guelph uh, train station downtown, uh, which was built in 1911. There was some controversy and, and really heated debate over the selection of the board of directors for the Toronto and Guelph Railway. The chair of the board was John George Bowes, uh, who was the mayor of Toronto. And here's an image of him. Uh, his terms of mayor were really clouded with corruption. And at one time he had to repay the railway 10,000 pounds that he acquired through underhanded trading. Uh, well, Mr. Bowes uh, selected the board, uh, the railway board of 13, and it was no surprise that nine of the 13 were shareholders and close associates and friends of his. The only members from Guelph on the board were Sheriff George Grange and Dr. William Clark, uh, who was only on the board because he was the Reeve of Guelph. Well, and this did not sit very well with the people of Guelph, as uh, one of the board's first decisions was to extend the railway line to Lake Huron, Woodstock, London, and Sarnia which would no longer make Guelph the, the terminus uh, that they had hoped for. Uh, and the, the local merchants and investors were, were promised this and they were really upset. So Dr. Clark felt this, this was a betrayal of Guelph's interests and he successfully fought the board to have the town's shares reduced from 25,000 pounds to 10,000 pounds. But in November of 1852, the Grand Trunk Railway was now starting. Uh, to take shape. Uh, there were a lot of investors from England who were looking to make their fortunes connecting Guelph uh, and Canada by rail. Uh, the creation of the charter for the Grand Trunk Railway allowed the Grand Trunk to amalgamate any other company or route that would form part of its main trunk line. As the Toronto and Guelph Railway had planned to extend its line to Sarnia, that line was amalgamated with the Grand Trunk and this move made the building of the Guelph Line appear more profitable and more desirable an investment for the British investors. Some of the key people that were involved in the negotiations were actually another son of John Galt, Alexander Tillich Galt. Uh, and he actually was, became Canada's first Minister of Finance. Uh, Canada's first Prime Minister, John A. Macdonald, was involved in this, as well as Sheriff George Grange, the only Guelphite who personally profited from the amalgamation of the Grand Trunk. Well, work on the Toronto and Guelph Railway began in February of 1853. The contract to build the, the line was signed with uh, C.S. Zowski and company at a cost of 7,408 uh, pounds per mile, uh, which was going to cost. Uh, a gang of men arrived in Guelph to build workshops and shanties and storehouses for the railway's construction. As building, building commenced, the value of the project actually increased, and there were overtures to the Guelph Council to sell their railway shares. Uh, and at this time, uh, the Guelph advertiser claimed that the country through which the railway will pass is not surpassed in fertility of soil or capability of production by any other section of, of, of equal extent in Canada. And the traffic, which may 
reasonably be anticipated upon it cannot fail to be highly remunerative to all stockholders, which basically in today's terminology means that the land that the railway is passing through is beautiful and fertile and the railway is going to be profitable. Uh, well, the Grand Trunk Railway saw that the rail link between Guelph and Toronto could be a huge financial success. And in 1853, after much debate by Guelph Council, the shares were sold to the Grand Trunk Railway. Uh, the Toronto Guelph Railway was acquired by the Grand Trunk, uh, who continued construction of the line. Well, this turned out to be a really wise decision, as within a few years, the Grand Trunk Railway was almost bankrupt. With seemingly endless delays, scandals, and financial mismanagement, the Toronto to Guelph section of the Grand Trunk Railway's construction did progress steadily. The first train to travel the line to Guelph was in January of 1856. Uh, the construction of the rail line had plenty of controversy, but the official opening ceremony had even more. That same year, 1856, Guelph's mayor, John Smith, received a telegram on Thursday the 12th of June informing him that the president of the Grand Trunk Railway and many members of the provincial legislature and the governor general, Sir Edmund Walker Head, um, were to arrive in Guelph in two days, which is on Saturday, June 14th, 1856, for the railway's official opening ceremonies. Well, the town had to quickly decorate and made ready for the important dignitaries. Well, the day after Mayor Smith received the telegram, the Solicitor General decided that there had to be a special sitting of the House uh, on Saturday, which was the same day as the opening ceremonies for, in Guelph. So the Governor General and many legislators had to stay in Toronto for this sitting. Well, this was disappointing as there was much grumbling as many legislators were planning on taking the train, train here to Guelph for the celebration. Well, a few members of Parliament were still able to go on the trip. Uh, on Saturday morning, the train left Toronto with over 200 people aboard it. Uh, this included a few members of the Legislative Assembly, contractors, railway directors, and some of Toronto's uh, prominent citizens, but there was no Governor General. A large crowd gathered in Guelph for the expected arrival of the Governor General, the trainload of dignitaries, and the ceremony to open the rail link between Toronto and Guelph. The train trip to Guelph was basically uneventful, except for the champagne luncheon at which several members of Parliament overindulged. As the spirits in the train were very high, some of the more indulgent MPPs came up with the idea of having Mr. Shaw, the MPP for Lanark, impersonate the Governor General, as they felt that none of the people in Guelph would know what Sir Edmund Head looked like. When the train arrived, the gathered crowd cheered and a cannon was fired in celebration. Mr. Shaw was introduced as Sir Edmund Head, he was given a hearty cheer and was escorted to the balcony of the Horwoods Hotel, uh, which soon became known as the Royal Hotel, just behind me. The honored guests and dignitaries disembarked from the train and followed al along cheering and supporting the, the ruse that was taking place. A large crowd of Guelphites and guests gathered beneath the balcony, and Mr. Rankin, the MPP for Essex, introduced the imposter as the Governor General. The imposter then spoke to the gathered audience about the beautiful land they passed through uh, to arrive at this thriving community of Guelph. While a number of speeches were being delivered, the MPP from Waterloo, Mr. Foley, attempted to expose the deception, trying to speak over the assembly. He informed the crowd that a great fraud had been practiced upon them. You have been led to believe that the Governor General is here today, while well, he is not here. And at this time, the imposter, Mr. Shaw, was physically dragged from the balcony. And there was general mayhem in the crowd, who was shouting, booing, and pushing, and a general uproar. And this only ended when the dignitaries made an undignified return to the train for the trip back to Toronto. The newspapers across the province were shock and anger at the, their elected officials for this display of drunken boorishness and attempted deceit of the people of Guelph. Uh, the Guelph community was extremely upset as their day of celebration was ruined. In 1853, the same year that construction started on the Guelph-Toronto line, uh, there was a push to build a rail line between Guelph and Galt. Once again, it was Sheriff Grange and Dr. William Clark who headed the campaign for Guelph Council to buy 10,000 pounds of railroad stock. The public was also encouraged to buy shares in this new rail project. Uh, but the people of Guelph were not very supportive of this rail line. Uh, both local newspapers, the Guelph Herald and the Guelph Advertiser, showed their disapproval in this venture in numerous articles and editorials that they wrote. Well, in order to get some uh, public support for their rail line, the directors of the Guelph Galt rail line started their own newspaper called the Guelph Mercury. Uh, and September 17, 1853, the first edition came out. 
And the New Mercury published very supportive articles promoting the Galt and Guelph Railway Company. Well, the second meeting for the railway line um, was very heated, uh, with Dr. Clark was involved in name calling and very angry outbursts. Uh, and even with the court decision against the railway, the Galt uh, and Guelph shareholders tried to move ahead and petition Parliament for a charter to build a railway from Guelph to Owen Sound. In January of 1854, the, the Guelph Mercury announced that the Galt and Guelph rail line contract was signed. And in May of 1854, there was a formal sod turning in Preston to start construction. There was still controversy over awarding the contract, uh, yet tenders were signed to clear the land for the track and the railway buildings, and contracts signed for masons to build bridges like the ones behind us and culverts uh, were commenced for a while, and then the money ran out. The Great Western Railway, whose grain shipments would be impacted by the Guelph Railway not being built, actually because their money ran out, they sold Guelph enough rails to finish the line for a 6% mortgage on the company. Uh, Dr. Clark pro pro proposed that uh, Guelph should borrow about 20,000 pounds from the Municipal Loan Fund. And there were several more meetings and Dr. Clark was repeatedly asked to show the railway's books. Uh, town Council did uh, agree to loan even more money, though they never saw the account books that Dr. Clark kept hidden. Um, construction then resumed once again. The rails were delivered by the Great Western Railway, uh, but controversy continued as two of the railway's directors, uh, Jacob Hespler and Sheriff Grange, who owned land on which the stations were to be built, uh, as well as much of the land surrounding the proposed station locations. Uh, the stations were not close to the city's business district where they hoped to have them built. Um, uh, Grange and Hesper were planning on selling, or so they said, planning on selling the land surrounding the stations at very high prices. Uh, they justified this by offering to donate the land for the stations. Uh, when the rest of the board of directors objected to this proposal, uh, Hesper and and Grange decided that they would no longer donate the land for the stations and required payment for the station sites that they both owned. Um, Guelph Council was furious and sought arbitration, which surprisingly came out in favor of the directors who awarded Grange 3,500 pounds and, and Hesper 1,000 pounds. So it was said that the Guelph Galt Railway was finally opened on September 28, 1857. And for this very short rail line, there were more promises broken and harsh words uttered than any other rail line in the, in the country, so it was said. While the building and financing of Guelph Railways were filled with controversy, overspending, nepotism, and deceit, the arrival of the train created an economic boon for the city. Businesses thrived and farmers prospered. Land prices rose steadily. Uh, but we know today the development of rail locally and across Canada also came at a great cost to the Indigenous people who were displaced from their homelands and hunting grounds as a result of the settlement fueled by the growth of the rail, and to the Chinese rail workers and black railway porters who faced dangerous working con conditions and discrimination. The railway did have a huge influence in the shaping of Guelph into the city it is today. And what do you think Guelph would be like if we didn't have the railway? Historically, we can learn about balancing development with social and economic justice and, and environmental justice. But knowing all of this, well, would we do anything differently today?